With the never-ending investments pouring into cloud computing, the question often arises for those of us committing the resources, am I getting the best return for my cloud investment, and how do I know? Well, at HashiCorp, we've asked those questions to nearly 1,200 enterprise organizations, and the results are in. Over the next several minutes, I'll share the results of the 2024 HashiCorp State of Cloud Strategy Survey and showcase the clear business value associated with achieving cloud maturity. Since I don't believe in bearing the lead, let's start with the headlines you'll learn more about over the next few minutes. First, the maturity of how you engage in cloud computing definitely matters. And while the percentage of organizations deemed highly mature is relatively small, the business value they get is significant. Second, having a centralized platform team is critical as the foundation of this potential success. Third, that's the pervasive importance of security in a well-run cloud program. And finally, it wouldn't be 2024 if we didn't address the current thinking about AI in the cloud infrastructure and security space. So stay tuned for that. 2024 marks the fourth year of the HashiCorp State of Cloud Strategy Survey and our third year in partnership with Forrester Consulting. Each year, we strive to focus on structural improvements to the survey, and this year was all about refining what cloud maturity really means. At HashiCorp, we spent the last decade enabling effective cloud transformation journeys for many of the world's most influential companies. We've packaged our expertise into a prescriptive maturity model to help organizations see where they are today and discover their next steps to accelerate ROI on their cloud investments. Now, this year's survey mapped very closely to that model and provides the most detailed understanding we've obtained thus far. You can find more details in the survey report on the website, but as I mentioned before, taking a more mature approach definitely matters. And that's probably a great place to start diving into the survey results. First, only about 8% of the respondents qualified as highly mature in terms of how they engage with cloud services across their organization. And keep in mind that achieving cloud maturity spans practices relating to both infrastructure and security. About another third of respondents fell into the low maturity category with the rest falling in the middle. Now this maps to what we see in practice and I'll be addressing the delta separating low maturity and high maturity orgs throughout this talk. It also lines up with other research in the industry. In fact, PwC's 2023 cloud business survey showed that while 78% of organizations had adopted cloud in all or most of their business, only 10% considered themselves to be truly cloud powered. As we look deeper at spending on cloud computing, we find that two thirds of respondents are increasing their cloud spend. And while that might not seem surprising, it's the magnitude that matters the most here. Gartner reports that spending on IaaS services will grow 24.5% in 2024, far and away the highest growth of any IT category. In fact, the rest of the categories are only growing about 7%. Also interesting to note, these investments favor a multi-cloud approach by 62% of the respondents, with 36% citing they are actively increasing their multi-cloud investment. These results serve as a good validation that multiple public cloud providers, coupled with an on-premises presence, often referred to as hybrid cloud, is the most popular deployment model. But despite all this investment, there is a persistent challenge that many companies don't have the talent they need to properly execute on their cloud program. In fact, six out of 10 respondents said they were experiencing a talent shortage with over a quarter of them citing significant shortages. This theme is consistent from last year as well. And critically, this problem is much more pronounced for low maturity organizations. Now, we certainly see this phenomenon firsthand as well, and it's a bit of a virtuous cycle. When you provide an environment grounded on modern technologies and practices, such as infrastructure as code as a standardized shared service, you entice higher quality developers who in turn can produce better code more quickly, which funds more investment. Unfortunately, the opposite is also true. The lack of such an environment makes it harder to secure the right talent and deliver on your cloud initiatives. When we look at the business implications of not optimizing how cloud services are consumed, over nine out of 10 organizations feel they're wasting money in the cloud. And this isn't a trivial amount of money. We're talking about 10, 20, 30% or more being deemed as wasted resources. Now this waste presents itself from many sources, but not having the right talent was the top reason, followed by over-provisioned and underutilized resources and the need for better policy enforcement. Fighting cloud waste is a core reason to adopt a declarative infrastructure as code approach as it lets you employ tactics such as applying policy prior to deployment and automatically recapturing cloud resources when they're no longer needed. 
Security was the top metric companies use to track success of their cloud program. This prioritization is due to the ever-increasing matrix of interconnected services and third-party applications that need to pass data, coupled with the challenge of secret sprawl and lack of full security lifecycle management. This includes practices such as discovery of unmanaged secrets, regular secrets rotation, and decommissioning security assets when no longer needed. Even more interesting, low maturity firms place higher priority on important but tactical things like the budget, while high maturity firms focus more on strategic concerns like getting the right people on the most important projects and orchestrating it all through a centralized platform team. With that in mind, let's dig a bit deeper into the concept of a centralized platform team and their ability to standardize consumption of cloud resources across all app dev teams. The implementation of a central platform team has really accelerated over the past couple of years and is a priority for virtually all organizations now. 42% of respondents indicated that their platform team has fully standardized cloud operations throughout their organization. But 67% of high maturity orgs indicated this level of standardization, while only 31% of low maturity orgs can claim the same thing. Plus, when we asked respondents without a platform team what approach they currently employ, the leading response was that they simply leave it up to the individual development teams. Now, this is a classic indicator of lower cloud maturity, foregoing all the benefit of a more standardized approach such as sharing and reusing of code, comprehensive policy enforcement, and a smaller matrix of images to maintain and service over time. And when you ask respondents about the overall success of their cloud program relative to their business goals, over two thirds felt it had delivered the expected results, but only 55% of low maturity orgs are finding cloud success compared to nearly 90% of high maturity respondents. Now this statistic again reinforces the business value associated with well-defined and more sophisticated practices relating to the consumption of cloud services. It's important to remember that effective engagement with cloud computing is not simply about applying traditional data center techniques. It's a paradigm shift that requires new technologies and techniques and even new organizational structures. This is all embedded in the HashiCorp maturity model I discussed earlier. Now, of course, we had to ask respondents about how they use or intend to use AI to support their cloud automation efforts. It should be no surprise that nearly everyone, 96%, expressed interest in the idea. But as it's still early days, only about 40% had made even rudimentary AI infrastructure investments, with a further 30% planning to do so within a year. It should also be no surprise that highly mature organizations were more aggressively moving into AI. The most common initial use cases here focus on data ingestion, transformation, and analysis, but other top use cases include chatbots, natural language processing, and automated code generation. Now, based on the potential power associated with infrastructure as code at scale, it's important to ensure that any AI integration is well vetted to drive the expected behavior. We can imagine a future state with more extensive generation of code and robust automated detection and remediation of anomalies, but this remains a ways off. And this is certainly a space we'll continue to probe on in future surveys. So as we bring this short video to a close, I wanted to reinforce the connection between the organizations that have invested in a more thoughtful and mature approach to their consumption of cloud infrastructure and security services. This is a significant shift for organizations, but there's also a very clear connection to meaningful business results, which is the promise everyone is really looking for in their transition to cloud. This is just a taste of the many insights in the 2024 HashiCorp State of Cloud Strategy Survey. There are many more insights to uncover across all these topics, as well as the ability to see how a high or low maturity approach affects the results. To see the full results, methodology, and maturity model, download the companion Forrester Consulting Study with their key recommendations and go to hashigorp.com slash state of the cloud. Thank you.